everyone and welcome to the Norman Rockwell Museum Archives. It's great to speak with you today and I hope you're all doing well. We are going to present uh, another interesting theme in Rockwell's work that's reflected here in the Museum Archives and certainly in his original art and that is the theme of women power or woman power I guess you could say um, spanning all ages uh, from girls to certainly grown women. Rockwell uh, created many works of art in which uh, women are portrayed in powerful roles. And um, it might be fun to start with uh, an image of a young girl who's playing a very successful game of marbles. And I'm wondering if any of you out there remember playing marbles out on the street uh, when you were young. I'm just putting on my gloves to uh, ensure the safety of our collections so that they are not handled too much uh, and so that the oils from my skin don't get on these collections. Uh, but washing your hands very well to handle collections is certainly another way of going about it. Um, this is a wonderful cover from September 2nd, 1939 at the tail end of the Great Depression called Marble's Champion. And of course, if you look closely at the image, you'll notice that the young lady who is bent down uh, on her knees on the ground with scuffed shoes uh, and very intent upon the game of marbles uh, is turning out to be the winner. Uh, she has a sack of marbles that she has collected as her prize here. And the two boys uh, who are both surprised and perturbed um, don't appear to be doing very well. If you look at the fact that their sacks are quite empty. During the Great Depression, one of the important topics in American magazines and certainly on their covers was uh, the concept that you could find happiness and enjoyment by just being together and by doing things that don't cost anything, more or less. So playing a game outside would really have fit into that subject matter. The young man with the blonde hair looking over the little girl's shoulder uh, was actually modeled by Norman Rockwell's son, Jarvis Rockwell. And Rockwell's family and friends turned up in many of his illustrations. In fact, um, many even gained their own kind of fame by being published on magazines that uh, were circulated by the millions. During World War II, women were encouraged by the American government to enter the workforce. And for the first time, they uh, became workers outside the home in droves. Uh, here we see a wonderful, humorous, but also very patriotic cover by Rockwell called Liberty Girl. Uh, published on September 4th, 1943, in the midst of the war. We notice that this young woman has a can-do kind of ability to do pretty much anything, any job, uh, because Rockwell portrays her as a security guard, as a gardener, uh, as perhaps a teacher or a schoolgirl, uh, as a cleaner, as a milk deliverer, uh, as a typist, and, you know, even as a machinist. And so, interestingly here, and we were kind of just talking about Rockwell's models, uh, which were often neighbors and friends, or family, um, this is one example uh, where Rockwell used a professional model to uh, take the part of Liberty Girl. And we can show you some wonderful photographs from the archives. You'll notice that Rockwell was not making it up. He was extremely specific about getting all the accoutrements that would appear in this picture uh, so that they could be photographed and so that he could use them as reference. So here we see the young woman who was the professional model for the piece. She is rolling up her sleeve, very much like a Rosie the Riveter uh, might do. Uh, she's wearing headphones, uh, has um, a money changer on her belt and a big set of keys. Um, here we see Rockwell in the photograph uh, holding up a shovel and a hoe. 
And the way that this would have worked is that the model would have come to Rockwell Studio and he would have had his studio assistant actually take the necessary photographs. For any given post cover, there might be up to a hundred or even more black and white photographs taken that would help Rockwell do his work. So for example, here, we see the glass jugs of milk, and if anybody remembers the time when milk was delivered to your door in glass bottles, um, this might be a throwback. Rockwell sometimes appears in his photographs uh, because he's holding up props or costumes or even modeling himself, and here we see him uh, with a mop. That might have been one of the jobs uh, reflected in the piece. And of course, one of my favorites is the young lady's saddle shoe. And if you look carefully, Rockwell's foot appears underneath her foot to prop it up so that it would appear as though she was marching or walking as quickly as she possibly could. Rockwell's most iconic paintings is called The Problem We All Live With, and that appeared in a 1964 edition of Look Magazine uh, at the commemoration of the 10th anniversary of the Brown versus Board of Education ruling. And of course, in that work, Rockwell portrays a very strong uh, young girl uh, whose name was Ruby Bridges, uh, who served as the inspiration for the painting. Uh, her experience as the first African-American girl to integrate the William Franz Elementary School in New Orleans, Louisiana, uh, really became an icon of the 1960s and uh, an image that really represented uh, the importance of democracy and equality for all. But these photographs are taken in Norman Rockwell's studio, not of Ruby Bridges, because the painting was done following her experience, but of a young lady who lived uh, nearby to Rockwell in Stockbridge, Massachusetts, named Linda Gunn. And in this photograph, we actually see Linda and her father, who was helping her to pose, uh, strike the pose for the painting that Rockwell created. Um, some interesting things that appear in a number of Rockwell photographs are blocks of wood on the ground which help to prop people's toes or heels up so that it appears that they are actually in motion and walking. One of the things to notice is that in this photograph there is a sports themed lunchbox which in the final painting is actually not there. Uh, the final painting includes just the books, uh, which make her appear quite serious about her education. Uh, and Rockwell ultimately felt that the more fanciful lunchbox uh, would probably be a distraction in his composition. Here, in order to give the sense also that Linda is in motion, is that her father is actually holding up her braid so uh, as though uh, to give a sense of her bouncing along um, with a child's gait. In this snippet of a photograph, uh, we notice that the young lady is wearing a very white dress. And to give you a sense of the kind of detail that Rockwell um, envisioned and wanted to ensure that he portrayed accu accurately, he asked a local seamstress to sew three white dresses in three different sizes because he was unsure of what young model he was planning to use in the painting. Uh, we were very fortunate at the Norman Rockwell Museum to acquire the actual dress that Linda Gunn posed in, in our collection. And uh, it's currently traveling with the museum's Four Freedoms exhibition, but it is uh, part of our permanent collection at this time. I'm so glad you were able to join us for this segment in the archives uh, relating to girl power and woman power. And we will very much look forward to seeing you next time for other topics.